Okay, so below the canopy is uh, a 23 portrait collection. I, I am the artist behind below, below the canopy. My name is Rachel Gray. So below the canopy is a is a pro program that um, with the, the collaboration with the Ministry of Plantations, and I have the honour of representing Malaysia as a British artist here at the expo, given during Sustainability Week, which words can't describe how proud I am to be able to do this. Like it's a huge honour to be able to represent Malaysia, and I'm a digital artist. What that means is I paint on a Wacom tablet, which is touch is a touch tilt and weight sensitive tablet and I use my Mac and the software Coral Painter. Now the software Coral Painter mimics that of oil paint. For me it's an easy transition from traditional into digital. I say easy in the sense that uh, I, I've put in the hours to learn how it works but it mimics that of oil paint so it really helps like me, me transition easier, like me, me transition across. Um, the, I would love to say a computer does all the work for me. I'd love to say I just press a button in Adobe Photoshop. I don't even use Adobe Photoshop. No pattern brushes, no no computer magicry whatsoever. I can't just press a button and hope it's done. <laughs> the portraits take anywhere between 80 to 200 hours. This program is over, well over a year in the making. Okay. Yeah, well over a year. So the fact that I'm standing here today is phenomenal because this program has literally been, it's almost two years in the making actually. Okay. Uh, and then to come, because obviously COVID's delayed things. So to actually be here at the expo is is amazing. Um, to present each night the behind the scenes of the program, like how how I paint my processes, because I take my wildlife photography. I don't just paint from an image from Google. I've got to see the animal. I've got to see how it moves, the way, the way its light is in the fur, it's, way its light is in the fur, the way the, the way the light tip touches its fur, how it interacts with water, how it interacts with other animals. Um, I I find if I just paint from a Google image, it's through someone else's eyes and not through my own. So I go to the jungles, I go up mountains and climb. I've slept in caves, I've camped by waterbed, uh, by riverbeds, all to see these animals in their natural environment. Um, which I can't get enough of. I love that. I live for that. I started painting when I was two, apparently. Oh. Um, my parents told me that as soon as I could hold a pencil at two, I was sketching and painting away. I did my degree and then I did a PGC and then uh, in post compulsory education. Um, and then and then I've been digital painting since. I started really into digital painting when I was probably about 17, 18. Mm -hmm. So it was many moons ago. <laughs> Initially, it's hard because as a traditional artist, you're used to, you can you can feel the oil of the paint move and it's a lot more textural it's a lot more you you smell it there's a lot more senses involved you you smell it you can move it you can slap about with it you spill a bit there's that sort of there's that kind of interaction um so it's different in the sense of digital digital is but it's still extremely precise if i it's as i said pressure pressure tilt and weight sensitive so if i apply a pressure the splodge becomes bigger and and I can move fast freely, and it'll it'll mimic. It, it goes like I draw on the on the on the on the Wacom, and it goes straight onto the screen. It's a complete blank canvas that I paint from. This project, well, below the canopy, will leave, go from here, and it will go back to Malaysia. It'll be exhibited in Malaysia, solo exhibition there, to bring back this program back to Malaysia. Mm -hmm. This program was also in the collaboration with COP26 mm -hmm. with the British High Commission. So I had a solo exhibition at their at their at their private dinner um, for COP26, mm -hmm. which is uh, the United. Uh, UN climate change conference um, that was held in Glasgow but my exhibition was held with uh, in KL with the British High Commission which was uh, f fantastic <laughs> I'm the first female British solo artist ever to, uh, to exhibit at the National Art Gallery which was I can't put that to words how amazing that was it was a lot of work for the collection to be created and to get it all set up but you don't get opportunities like that do you know what I mean that doesn't that doesn't just happen. <laughs> Malaysia's rich in biodiversity. It's got so many animals, like insane amount of animals. You've got the proboscis monkey, the Malaysian tiger, the orangutan, the Malaysian tapir, the macaque, and then you've got all kinds of birds. Um, and that's just naming some of like the, the, the stars of Malaysian wildlife, but there's so many other animals in between. Um, and I adore anything with four legs and a tail. So the fact that I knew all these animals were here and I got the chance, I, and I actively went out my way to go and find them, um, I, I just love it. Like it's, it's amazing to see them. I love to pit any animal. Yeah. As I said, I, get, I'm, I am obsessed with animals. So if, 
There is. You can't name one. <laughs> no, well, it's more. It's the painting that, uh, that I'm painting at the time is my favorite because it re -sum like I use my photography to re submerse my mind into where I was painting from. So like. If I go out in the jungle or whatever, or I'm out in, in Namibia and I'm taking all the photographs, I'm, I'm on Malaysia, I'm taking photographs of animals and I'm seeing them in their natural state. Um, I try and take some sketches, soak them up as much as I can, mm -hmm. and then I take all that back to the studio and paint from there. Um, I don't just paint from a photograph like directly, so it's not like, oh, that's a photograph, that's a painting. I, I change because um, I want my own artistic impression on it. <laughs> but my favorite animal has to be the one I'm painting at the time. It's not, because that takes me straight back to that memory, okay. which is always magical. Yes. I try and capture the character of the animal and put it onto canvas. I try, I try and do that. So, <laughs> I don't know if it's successful or not, but <laughs> I most certainly try and capture the moment I've seen onto canvas so people can have, because people might not get the chance to trek in jungles or sleep in caves or the rest of it so i do that so other people don't have to so they can just see the animal they can see the like the highlights the the, the moment <laughs> i try and capture something that happened whilst i was there so the animals are always very they're always up to something mm -hmm. like the, yeah. the, the they're always so either they're interacting with the surroundings they're interacting with other animals animals around water are a completely different game again because like they're either playing drinking super alert there's a pecking order of who can go to the water first. So you just observe, you just soak all that up. That's right. Well, I soak all that up, should I say. You, how long you got? <laughs> how long you got? Um, oh, so many. Um, I think, oh, too many to choose from, to be honest with you. Um, I've, got, I've got tons in Malaysia, like either seeing, seeing some of the bigger animals in the wild for the first time, or just seeing a macaque just offhand like just oh there's a macaque it's a well well it's an amazing animal it's just there um or going up mount kilabala and seeing the animals up there like it it's too hard to choose one <laughs> well i've always loved animals i've always loved animals so the reason i paint well i love animals so I tr that comes through when i paint them hopefully but i art is like breathing so it was kind of like i always loved animals i love art so to combine the two just it just it just made sense <laughs> all the time oh my goodness there's so many obstacles being an artist like it's not like doing a normal nine to five job where there's a progression ladder of oh you do this and then you you can move up in your in the career or you can do or if you do this you can work overtime or you can, there's no with being a full-time artist that just all goes out the window you will i will work easily 12 hours a day and that's just normal. I've understood, I've heard quite a lot of just oh so you, you paint all day and that's a huge misconception. I would love to just paint all day but I don't. There's so many emails, there's so many meetings, there's because I've got it as an artist you've got to you you've got to expand as much as you can in the sense of um, not just pigeonholing yourself and say, okay, I, I paint oranges and that's all I paint, I paint oranges. Um, it's like no there's so much of the world out there figure out what what else is amazing um but in order to in order to develop your your career um i also have my online shop i also do coaching i used to lecture like there's it it really is like a mismatch and now i'm at the expo yeah. expo so it's it truly is an absolute mix so the idea that it's there is it's not for the faint-hearted being an artist it's really not there's an an amazing amount of obstacles and you are your own pr person your, your own social media management you are the assistant and everything else in between so it's a it really is it, i would say it's difficult to do but it's completely worth it i use a wacom tablet and i use a mac okay. and i use coral painter oh, software coral painter yeah they, they've actually sponsored, uh, they're one of my sponsors in, in, for my exhibition, uh, my uh, presentations at oh. Expo. Oh. Yes. Oh, I love, I love animals. I have, a, I have a little cat called Sushi and he's so cute. He's a little Malaysian street kitty. Um, we rescued him a couple, like almost not last uh, two Christmas ago, right in, in the middle of Coburn. And he, he, he's, I love him. I love him. Oh, I can bore you to tears with photos. I love, I love uh, yeah. And he, Seeing other people's pets and seeing my pets, it, like seeing see, seeing sushi is fantastic. Yeah. 
thank you so much for your time. You're and welcome. Best wishes for your next project as well as the exhibition over here. Yeah. Thank you so much for for your time. Thank you so much for, for coming and for looking on the works online. And and uh, I look forward to hearing. I look forward to hearing more and following you on the blog. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs>